You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. i just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Sons of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Ryan Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, bye, bye, bye. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your riding into maturity. For a full list of services, visit BlackWolfEditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. 
Welcome to the Hardcore Patriot. Oh, it's gonna be fun. We can stay up late, swap the manly stories in the morning. This is dangerous, son. You gotta know how to handle it. One wrong move and you're done for. And now, here's your host, Alan Ray. Well, I hope we made it through the weekend. How do you do? I'm Alan Ray, the Hardcore Patriot. Welcome to yet another edition of the Hardcore Patriot. Um, broadcasting from the Hardcore Patriot Studios in a cornfield in southeastern Michigan. Far away from all of the chaos and uh, doom and gloom of Texas. But you know, my thoughts and prayers have been with those people all weekend. I was uh, talking about this Friday. I seem to have a lot of friends. I have uh, family roots in Texas, even a couple of cousins that live there. Um, I've heard, I believe, from everybody that I know that lives there, they're all safe. They've all endured um, flooding, a little bit of rain, some property damage. And, um, you know, quite honestly, there, there's been other things going on all weekend. But my focus since Friday afternoon really has been aimed at what's going on in Texas. It was kind of a freak of nature. I mean, this um, the hurricane itself is not, and I, and I know the climate alarmists are going to tell you different, but it is not the biggest hurricane to hit Texas. However, it did something kind of odd when it hit the coastline. It basically stalled. The momentum just stalled out, and it just hung there and dumped ridiculous amount of rain uh, in, in a lot of cities. Uh, very slowly moving inwards, and it annihilated Houston. Uh, Houston is underwater. And it and I hate, I really, first of all, let, let's get a few things out of the way. Number one, um, I'm going to try not to get too frustrated, but there are elements, and uh, just about every one of these elements are left-wing um, nutcases, as far as I'm concerned, that have turned this tragedy into a, a political scapegoat. Some of them are so stupid that they literally believe that Donald Trump caused, the, uh, caused this hurricane, Harvey. That's what they indicate, that this is all Donald Trump's fault. Others are out there spreading lies, spreading falsehoods. Um, one of them, just just before I started recording this, I happened to see this, basically uh, is, is indicating that the Trump administration, because they do not have a um, head of, of Department of Homeland Security, because they do not temporarily have a head of FEMA, uh, that it's chaos, that they're not, they're, that they're totally ineffective. And this is a blatant untruth, blatant lie, blatant propaganda spreading. Because really, honestly, if you notice what happened, even before the hurricane hit the shoreline, Governor Abbott and President Trump spoke to each other. Abbott in I mean, a very good move, a very good move by him, declared that coastline a disaster area, knowing what was coming. And what this did, for those of you that decided to skip civics, that decided to uh, just turn your backs on how the government operates, when he declares that coastline a disaster area, that, in effect, pulls the switch that sets FEMA in motion, that hooks him into the federal government 
and allows federal monies, federal resources that have been set aside previously for such a disaster, it sets all of this in motion. It starts bringing in the Red Cross. It starts bringing in all of these groups who know what's about to happen. Uh, Governor Abbott did exactly what he should have done. The Trump administration did exactly what they should have done. And now the loss of life has been greatly reduced because they fired off all of this beforehand. They knew what was going to hit. They knew what was coming. And we're still getting these idiots, these morons, these uh, neo-socialist left that don't understand how things work. I, I, I really, I, I almost feel bad for them. Almost. Outside of the fact that you can educate yourself. Each and every one of us, and I hold in my hand right now while we're speaking, I hold a smartphone. And most of these people that I see, just about all these people that I see, regardless, regardless of their income, seem to have one of these things. And you can literally educate yourself just from this tiny little smartphone. It has more computing. You are tapped into the knowledge of the world. So if you don't know how the government works, I really don't want to hear your crap. You're just stupid. You, you, have, you have made the decision to remain ignorant. You have made the decision to be human stupidity. So I don't really feel that sorry for you. What I do feel sorry for is the people uh, in Houston who were told that Governor Abbott, and they were told this by the mayor of Houston, who was a Democrat, they were told that government that Governor Abbott was fear-mongering. They don't need to evacuate. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, followers of the Hardcore Patriot, unfortunately, this is going to cause a loss of life. And every one of these lives are on this mayor's head. They're, the blood is on his hands. And I don't care what anybody else says. They could have at least made an attempt to tell people in low-lying areas, look, get to high ground. We have 40 inches of rain coming here. Things are going to flood. You need to at least get to high ground. He did not. He did not. In fact, he basically thumbed his nose at Governor Abbott and said, we got this. We're going to be okay. Well, now they're in trouble. Now they're in trouble. And, and then we have more, and this is equally as frustrating to me. I literally saw a tweet and, I, and, and, and it was so profoundly stupid, I really don't know what to say. Um, of course, they're calling in as many volunteers with boats as they can to pull these people out of trouble. And it's not the mayor of Houston. It is the government. It is, it is the Texas uh, government, the state. And this person actually said, you're calling inexperienced boaters in to try to help. Where's FEMA? Where's our government? You know, this is the kind of person that you and I, uh, the hardcore patriots, the conservatives, the ones that actually uh, know what's going on, this is where we cringe. We go, oh, God, because this poor fool does not understand what makes America great. This poor idiot, this dumbed down, and, and it's probably not even their fault. They were just probably so dumbed down by the education process, and they never gave it a second of thought to educate themselves and to, to actually study what makes America great. This poor person believes that there is enough government converging on Houston, converging on Texas, to save everybody that's affected by this hurricane. This poor fool has been led to believe, probably by the leftist propaganda arm, by people like Hillary Clinton and her shills, and the people like Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi, all of these, these idiots that people keep voting in. God knows why they vote them in, but they do. 
They have been brainwashed by these people that there is enough government to pull you out of a hole in your darkest hour. And, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that listen to the Hardcore Patriot, every time I put one of these out, what do I always say? What do I always say? This is the perfect example. Never put your faith into a government that cannot and will not be there for you in your darkest hour. God bless the people that are there from FEMA, that are there from the state, that are there from the National Guard, from the military. They're doing their best. And I I laud, I applaud every one of them. I wish I could just fly down there and shake their hands, but I would just be in the way. If I was close enough, I would probably have my boat, my little bitty boat with its little bitty five horse motor on the back of a car, and I would be going there to help myself. But by the time I get down there, this whole thing is probably going to be under control. But I, I, I hear this, and I think this poor fool does not understand what made this nation exceptional. What made this nation great. Because what makes this nation great are the Texans that are down there with their boats, with their kayaks, with whatever they have, helping out, volunteering, jumping into that water and pulling people back to safety. They're not from the government. They're not getting paid to do this. They're doing it because life is precious. Life is important. And I guarantee you, they're not asking when they get to those people, are you a Democrat or Republican? Because if you're one or the other, I'm not going to save you. No. Life is important. When it all boils down to its simplest form, your life is important. And you know what? So is mine. But if I have to risk my life to save yours, I'm going to do it. Because that's what makes America exceptional. And these Dunderheaded, neo-socialist, whiny little basement-dwelling, anti-fa pansies don't get it. They don't get it. Why? Because they're selfish. They're selfish to a fault. They've been brainwashed to believe that selfishness is the best path. And, and this is the contrast we're seeing in Berkeley right now. They're beating anybody that looks conservative. Anybody that's white walking around in there, these hooded, masked terrorists, and God knows for the life of me, I can't figure out why they haven't been deemed terrorists and sent Department of Homeland Security officials in there and just mow them all down just like you would ISIS. I would. They've already proven they're violent terrorists. Maybe not mow them down, but at least run them down, knock them over, handcuff them, unmask them, and write their names down and say, you know what, you're on a terrorist watch list from now on. I can't understand why they're not doing that. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. But we have these little pansies over in Berkeley. They're beating people up, which I doubt they're really causing any serious injury because every one of them's anemic. They're probably a bunch of beggins that can't throw a punch even if they tried. And they're over there, they've taken over a park. Oh, whoopee, you've taken over a park, congratulations. A man got shot out west for taking over a government facility for no reason at all. He just got blown away. The Bundy Ranch was a standoff. But it's okay for these anti-fi idiots to do it. But nonetheless, they're out there and they're getting support. They're getting support from these anti-whites, and that's what I'm going to call them from now on. They're, they're racists. They're anti-whites. That's what they are. Let's just call it what it is. They're anti-whites. You know, they, and we sit there and look at them. It's like, well, what's wrong with you people? Color doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It matters. No, it don't. It doesn't matter. It's a variant strand of DNA. You look at Texas. You look at Houston. What's going on right now? There's blacks helping whites. There's whites helping blacks. There's Latinos helping whites and blacks. There's blacks and whites helping Latinos. It don't matter. When it all boils down to it, when the crap hits the fan, 
and we have to rely on each other, and we have nothing else, all that stuff gets washed aside. All of it goes right out the window. And one of these race-baiting idiots has out there on social media right now that, well, yeah, they're helping each other now, but the hate will continue once the water recedes. You know what? You are the problem. You are the problem, and you need to be taken out of the situation. And I don't mean that violently. I just mean she needs to just shut up and sit down. These people are, it's, it's all coming up. Hopefully, 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 the United States of America in its entirety sees this contrast like I'm seeing it right now. Sees the selfish protests over there in Berkeley. The little safe, safe, safe space seeking, coloring book, coloring, uh, little anti-fa. They don't even know what fascism is. That's the funniest part of it. They have no idea what fascism is. They are literally begging for fascism. They want the government to take over everything. They want the government to take over businesses and your personal life and everything. Excuse me, that's fascism. <laughs> and they're idiots. And, and you're sitting there over there, and they're, they're, they're yelling and screaming and beating people up because they're white and because they may look like conservatives. And then you have real Americans. These are not real Americans over there in Berkeley. They're not. They're a bunch of communists. That's what they are. They're communists. Look at their flag. Their flag is a replica of a communist flag. Their creed is a replica of communist creeds. Their actions, their demands are communists. It's what we literally used to fight countries to stop is communism. And that's what they are. Let's call them what they are. They're anti-white communists. It's what they are. And if you're offended by that, I'm sorry. But wake up. Get your head out of your butt. You have them over there whining and crying. Gimme, 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 gimme. Me, 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 me. Mine, mine, mine. It's mine. And then, by contrast, you have in Texas real people, adults, adults. Let's call them adults. Standing up for each other, protecting each other, pulling each other out of the water. Helping each other. People like me. You know, and this isn't a direct thing, but I know my congregation sets aside money and sends money to this fellow church in Nashville, Tennessee. And we do that every month. So that when things like this happen, the money is already there. And we got word today, this morning, in, in church service that that congregation that heads up this this money, the supplies, they were already on their way to Texas. They were on their way to Texas yesterday. They're not paid for it. It's not a government entity. 100% volunteer. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why America is exceptional. Yes, I know it happens in other places. It's called brotherly love. But it, what's, it's what makes people exceptional. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the overwhelming majority of those people, oh, and by the way, kudos, this makes me laugh. <laughs> the Cajun Navy is on the way to Houston right now. And those of you that don't know what the Cajun Navy is, the Cajun Navy made its appearance, I believe, in Hurricane Katrina. They're a bunch of Cajuns with four-wheel drive pickups and flat-bottom boats that spent hours and hours and days pulling people out of tight spots. They're on their way there now. They're rushing headlong into the danger to help fellow Americans. God bless them. Pray for them, would you? Pray for everybody that's doing this. It doesn't matter. When situations like this arise, politics get pushed to the side. It's the last thing on people's minds. Why do we make it the first thing that we want to talk about? Why do we sit here and point fingers? And I guarantee you the finger pointing is going to happen. It's going to go on and on. It's already started. It's already started. And, and all of it is misguided. I'm looking at it thinking, that's, that's not what happened. That's not what's going on. How can you be so stupid and blind? 
but that's what it is. It's propaganda. It's truly really what it all boils down to. It's propaganda. You are being brainwashed. You're being bombarded day after day, night after night. And unfortunately, it's not just from the left. It's from the right. They all do it. It's just the right's not very good at it. I hate to say it. The GOP's not really good at propaganda. Oh, they used to be. Used to be. But they're not anymore. The hippies have taken over the, uh, the, the, the Democrats. You remember the hippies. They were communists. Old communes. They all lived together. Grew uh, vegetables and all that. Yeah, it's cool to be a hippie now. I remember the 60s. It wasn't cool to be a hippie. Hippies were basically uh, pot smoker, LSD tripping, uh, constantly out of touch with reality. And they had this vision, this idea in their heads of nirvana. Of a nirvana where they didn't have to work, man. They didn't have to go to a job, man. They weren't a slave, man. They didn't have to put forth any effort, man. That's what their thinking was. Well, that thinking doesn't work. It doesn't. All it does is lead a country down a road to ruin. And we know that. We know that. Well, now, now all these hippies run the Democratic Party. They do. They run the Democrat Party. Look at them all. Look at Bill Clinton. <laughs> he was one. Look at how he talks. Look at his old pictures. And the old hippie communist philosophies are what they're trying to push. It's pretty easy. But the thing about it is, is they have the media, which basically when back in the days of, uh, of the 60s and the, the times of love and all that stuff, the, the, the era of free love, yeah, that's what a lot of those hippies did. They were journalists. So they got into that. They infiltrated the media. And they're on the side of the Democrats. And together they have formed quite the arm of propaganda. And it's kind of funny because, you know, and I hate to bring this up. I really don't even want to use this word. But I was watching, I watch the History Channel a lot. And I was watching a program um, last night. Nope, Friday night. Squelch at Friday night. When I got home from work, it was late. I was watching a program on the History Channel. And they were talking about how the Nazi party couldn't really get rid of the Jews right off the bat without creating a PR nightmare. So what they did so they could identify them and slowly eradicate them is they labeled them with a physical label. They took a yellow Star of David and made it mandatory for the Jews to put the Star of David on each and every one of them. So that they could be quickly and easily identified. Labeling. Does that sound familiar to you? That sounds familiar to me. Does that sound familiar to you? It really does. Labeling. Identity. Identity politics. Now, here's the thing. Um, we all know. We all know that, that they have taken to calling anybody that doesn't agree with them and doesn't goose step along with their little freak parade, they've taken to call them all Nazis. If you disagree with the left, you are now a Nazi. Well, I hate to tell these guys this, but they really do. And this, this is coming from somebody who actually studies World War II quite a bit. I'm not the expert on it. But I do read a lot about it. I do watch a lot of shows about it. I'm interested in it because the whole World War II scenario was quite the phenomenon. And it led to quite a few advances in life that we know it today. It led to quite a few problems in life we have today. It's a very interesting time. So I have read and studied and watched programs on it. And apparently these people have not. Because... Every move they've been making lately pretty much mirror the moves that Adolf Hitler made to try to gain power in Germany. Oh, you can't say that, Al. You can't say that. You're wrong. No, I'm not. Go back and study your history. They're doing the same thing. 
everybody conservative, the propaganda arm of the Democratic Party is labeling them a, a, a Nazi, labeling them undesirable, uh, labeling all the people in the flyover states as inferior species. Yeah, you're inferior species, just like the Nazis labeled the Jews. They're inferior. That's why I said in my last program, for the life of me, I can't understand why the Jews support Democrats. I really don't. I don't understand really why unions support the Democrats. They constantly kick them in the teeth. You ever stopped and wondered how many times on the election process that the Democrats have kicked the unions in the teeth? Think about this with me for a second. I mean, I don't mean to chase a rabbit, but I'm going to chase a rabbit, okay? This is kind of funny. The Democrats want all of these illegal aliens, and I'm going to call them what they are. I don't care if you don't like the terminology. They're here illegally, and they're not immigrants. They're aliens. They don't belong here. So they're illegal aliens. They're supporting wanting all of these people here in this nation. And what that does is it drives down the amount per hour that people will make. If you're a union, you should be, you know, or a union member, I should say, you should be furious with this. Because if they grant all of these people amnesty, the first thing they're going to do is go after union jobs and underbid them undercut them right now as I speak and this isn't I'm not talking about the UAW the big shot unions the ones that are just as corrupt as uh, the, the businesses that they propose are the evil ones I'm talking local plumbers union local carpenters union the ones that are actually unions that you know what I really don't have a problem with because they they make sure that these guys are getting paid a decent wage and that's fine. You have the freedom to do that. I don't have to vote for you, but, you know, hey, it's your life. But what this is doing, guys, in the unions, now that all these guys are here, they're going to want amnesty. And once they grant them amnesty, well, they're going to underbid you. They're going to undercut you. People are going to start hiring them to do the carpentry work, to do the plumbing work. Because they'll work for a cheaper wage. Have fun with that. And just remember, the Democrats are the one that want this. Next time, if you're a union member and you go to pull the lever on a Democrat, just put that in the back of your mind. These people continue to kick you in the teeth time after time, day after day, election after election, and you continue to support them. Don't you feel a little bit ignorant now? Hey, when I come back, we're going to talk about some other stuff, I guarantee you. I'm Alan Ray, the Hardcore Patriot. Thank you for spending your Monday with me. I'll be back in just a moment. Hey, I'm back, <laughs> and I'm eating popcorn, and I'm drinking iced tea. Ah, yes, it's good stuff, too. Um, Let's get off politics for a while, shall we? I've been railing on you people about being prepared for stuff like this, and I, and I want to just, and if you haven't figured out by now, I don't have a single note to my name in this episode, okay? I am basically just flying off the cuff, flying off the handle, spewing out whatever comes to my mind. And um, I want to point out a few things that has been going on in Texas that you should learn from. You need to study this disaster very, very closely. Flooding 
is a problem that happens in quite a few states. I live on a higher plane. I live on a higher ground. And I'm reminded of that every time I go for a run. I went for a run yesterday. I pulled five miles. And um, it, seriously, the second I leave my house, three out of the four directions I run, I go downhill as I leave. And I continue to go downhill until I get smart enough to turn around and run back. And the whole time I'm running back, I'm running uphill. Why? Because many, well, quite a few thousand years ago, they say three to four thousand years ago, a half mile down the road from where yours truly, the hardcore patriot, is broadcasting from his nice little cozy cornfield in southeastern Michigan, a half mile down the road, there is this dip. That dip is actually a ridge that runs north, kind of north, northeast, that used to be the shores of Lake Erie. Well, they called it a different lake back then. It was like an inland lake, but it hooked to Lake Erie. So literally, when I take off running, I run downhill for however long I want to go. And then I have to turn around and run back uphill the whole way. So I'm reminded of this, that I do live on higher ground. Now, if I turn around and run west, I do run uphill for a little ways, a half mile, and then it starts going back downhill. So that's the peak. Now, there is a river that runs less than, well, just about a mile away from here. It does flood once in a while. It has flooded. There has been spots not too far from here that have flooded so badly that they've gone over bridges. But I'm safe. I'm safe from flooding. I'm not part of a floodplain. If water hit my door, folks, we have problems. Because that means Monroe, the city of Monroe, is probably under about 100 feet of water. Uh, it means that uh, Adrian is probably gone. It means that, uh, I don't know, you name it. <laughs> we People are up to their eyebrows in water all the way till they get to here. Because I'm on a higher plane. I'm on a higher ground. So I don't have to worry about flooding. However, the water table here is quite high for being on a higher ground. Uh, I don't have a basement. My neighbors on either side has basements and across the road. And every time the power goes out, the first thing that happens is their basements start flooding. So thank God I don't have a basement. I don't want one. Not with that going on. I would love to have a nice walkout basement, but not with the high water table we have. But like I started discussing Friday, and I want to hammer this home. I can't hammer this home enough for you. There's some things that have happened in, um, and, and, and none of these huge emergencies happen without us learning. They have been telling people over and over again, as the floods rise, go upstairs. But don't go into your attic unless there's a way out onto the roof. Why? Because once you're up in that attic, if you have to crawl through the ceiling to get to your attic and there's no other way out, that's your last stand. That's it. That's where you go. If the water goes over the roof of your house, you're done. You're going to drown. A little thing to put in the back of your mind. We learned something. Hopefully you learned something. When you have a hurricane and you live on a shore or close to a shore where you can be affected and they say, you know what? It would be a good time to get out. Do me a favor. Get out. Get out. Don't be a maniac. Don't be an idiot. But the sooner you leave, the sooner you grab and go, the less likely there's going to be traffic jams and traffic issues where you get stuck in your car while the hurricane's hitting you. If the majority of the people on that coastline, when that turned into a full-fledged hurricane, and Governor Abbott said, hey, guess what? It's a good idea if you got out of there. If they all would have, patiently, intentionally, and already had things ready, hint, 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 got their 72-hour bag or whatever in their car, threw some extra water, extra food, extra clothing, whatever they had quickly, got out onto the freeway and headed inland away from the coast, if they all would have did that as soon as they heard it was going to hit, we wouldn't have had the problems. Now, I, I, I'm not going to call them names anymore. 
I'm not going to call names. The mayor of Houston, he, he did a no-no. He really did. Six million people in Houston. And he said, ah, no, we got this. Never mind. You don't have to evacuate. That should not have been. In fact, he actually criticized Abbott. He called him a fear monger. And he erased that tweet. But you know what? I have it. I have it screenshotted and saved in my phone. Because this is what happens when stupidity reigns. Okay. Once again, once again, what do I always say? The government cannot, will not be there for you in your darkest hour in your time of need. You have to depend on yourself. You have to depend on your neighbors, and your neighbors need to depend on you. Get with these people ahead of time. Hey, guess what? Now, today, today, August 28, 2017, right now, would be a good time for you, dear patriot, to sit down with a pen and paper in hand, the gadgets off, maybe a computer on so you can do some research and figure out what are the emergencies that are most likely to happen in your area. Brush fires, forest fires, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, you name it, they're out there. Crime, <laughs> civil unrest. You know, there are areas where civil unrest and they can happen. I live kind of close to one. I live an hour and a half away. If things really go bad, if things really go south, if we really do have a major event that takes the power out, a lot of the people from places like Detroit and Toledo and Monroe are going to start wandering out into these areas out here to these small towns in search of resources that are not going to be available to them. It's going to be like a zombie apocalypse almost. Because they're going to be hungry. They're going to be willing to do anything to feed themselves and probably their families. And it's going to get ugly. So that's one of the things you kind of have to think about. Civil unrest. And I don't want to scare you. I, the last thing on my mind. What, I want you to enjoy life. I really do. I want you to live life to the fullest. But there is a part of your brain that has to, has to, for your own good, your own safety, and your own peace of mind, take a little time once in a while to sit down and think about what could happen and how am I prepared for it. Can I spend the night in my car in a blizzard without dying? Can I spend a night in my car away from home during a flood that I've had to wake my wife and kids up, throw them in a vehicle, and take off? Will we be able to survive for a couple of days? Do we have the resources that we can grab and go on the way out the door? If not, why not? And you don't have to be a maniac. You don't have to be, I mean, you know, and like I said, these TV shows, they don't do creeds. Everybody I know that actually is a prepper, a real prepper, you don't know they are. You say, oh, look, you got a, a farm. You know, you've got some extra resources. That's pretty cool. Well, that's because they have decided that, that their safety means two, three years of supplies. I may regret my decision. My decision was 30 days. That's fine. At the very minimum, three days, 72 hours. Have a get home bag in your car. Have a get out of there bag in your car. In your car already or next to your door in your bedroom, whatever. That you can grab, throw in the back of your car and get out when they tell you to evacuate. I have a nuclear power plant uh, 30 miles from my house. That comes into play, too. Hopefully not, because the wind usually blows where it's Canada's problem, not my problem. But you just don't know. You don't know. Take a little time to figure out online what your emergencies are and do a little bit of preparedness. At least have it in your mind to know what to do when one strikes, if a tornado happens. 
And if you have little ones, they need to know what to do. I was never so proud of my, my three kids when they were little. A tornado touched down in the area. And, of course, me being the adult, big bad Al, I'm out there in the middle of it all, watching the sky, watching what's going on. You know, it's getting a little, little iffy out there. I come in, I look at my wife, where's the kids? Well, they're in the closet like you told them to get into and the tornado sirens go off. And, yep, they were in there. They had a flashlight. They had a couple of games. And they were in there in a safe place. And I'm like, well, good for them. They did listen. My God, I didn't think they ever listened. And they did. But really, honestly, little common sense things. They found a woman that had died, one of the casualties in Houston, because she decided she was going to try to drive through water. Okay, let me <laughs> let me explain something to you if you don't know already, okay? Water is very deceptive. Water is deceptive. And I found this out as a young teen. Um, there was a flood. Not, in fact, it, it, it's only, as a crow flies, it's only two miles from here. There's a big, steep hill. And I decided to be, you know, Mr. Cool, drive my truck down there with my girlfriend. And the water was going across the road. Well, we got right in the middle of the bridge where the river was crossing, and that truck moved over like six and a half feet. Fortunately, it touched ground. I got traction and bolted out of there. But how stupid of me. You don't know how deep. Even though you've driven this road time after time after time after time, you truly don't know how deep water is if it's covering that road. You really don't. There's a place in Toledo, not far from here, that they actually have signs. If, they, if you see this flooded, please, God, don't drive under here. Because it usually means it's six, seven feet, and you're just going to drown. I've, I've seen that sign. You know, it doesn't exactly say that, but it warns you. And this woman made a poor choice. In fact, a lot of people made a poor choice. When you drive into water, your motor can't handle it. You have electronics under your hood that can't handle it. You will stall your engine. Water gets into your exhaust. Water gets into your intake. It gets all up into your motor, and your motor seizes. It stops, and now you're screwed. Use a little bit of common sense. And, I, and I'm not trying to be nasty about it. I'm, trying, I'm not trying to be obnoxious about it. But I'm just saying, don't drive into the water. This is what happens. We have loss of life. The same with going upstairs and getting into your attic when the flood water tries to get onto your roof. You can at least be, you know, get off of the roof. You can be saved if you're on the roof. They literally have to break through your wall to get you if you're in the attic, and by that time you're probably dead. There, there's so many things in emergency situations, and here's the here's the big thing about it. All emergency situations are a fluid event. You just don't know what's going to happen. You just don't know. So the biggest, the biggest thing that I can tell you is remain calm. Practice remaining calm. Panicking during an emergency will get you injured or killed. Hopefully we're not seeing a lot of that. And like I said, God bless those people down in Texas right now. There are so many volunteers sitting there. There's so many people. And if you're one of these sorry people that think that this is 100% on the government, well, you just don't know what America is. You just don't know what American exceptionalism is. But there's so many things to learn. There were so many things to learn from Hurricane Katrina. There were so many things to learn on every tornado that touched down. The one in Fulton, Missouri. So many things. And and we ha we live in a time, we literally live in a time where you can be warned way ahead of time. Minutes count. Minutes count, seconds count. Whether it be a forest fire, a tornado, a hurricane moving in, seconds, minutes, they count. Don't stand there and think you're immune to a disaster. You're not. You are not. You're fallible. But you also have to make up your mind whether you're going to be an asset or a liability. 
because that's the two kind of people going on in Texas right now. There are two types of people in Texas. There's assets and there's liabilities. The people that had to be saved because they made a poor choice, some of them had to be saved because they didn't have a choice. They really didn't. They're liabilities. The people that are heading down there or maybe got to safety and then turned back and went back to get people out of danger, the people that were prepared, the people that knew what they were doing and that you can tell thought this through or had been through it a few times, and now they're down there helping, volunteering, risking themselves, their health to try to save others, they're assets. They're assets. And wouldn't you rather be an asset when you prepare, when you have just some supplies thrown together in the back of your car or next to your door, where if you have to grab and go, you can, you can get your kids. And, and I'm not going to go into detail on them. The details are out there. And really, quite honestly, uh, the supplies you need to get away vary from state to state, from county to county sometimes. What I have to get out of here might be a lot different from what you have. Where I have to go is a lot different than where you have to go. If you're in a city, if you're downtown living in an apartment, you may only make it as far as the suburbs. I'm out in a cornfield. I will probably have to go to a town or woods or another cornfield. Yay, me. I know how to live in cornfields, so I'm lucky. <laughs> but my, my plans aren't complete yet by any means. But I just want you to start thinking about this. Learn from what's going on in Texas. It can happen anywhere at any time to anybody. And those of you that have been through these kind of emergencies, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't learned the first time, why not? Why not? Well, I'm done preaching to you. I really am. Um, we're going to speak again Friday, Lord willing. I'm still around, still kicking, still doing my thing. And I, I really... Really, quite honestly, it's kind of funny because what we'll talk about Friday probably hasn't even happened yet. But suffice it to say, I want you, my fellow patriots, I want you, listeners of the Hardcore Patriot, to do me a favor. Spend as much time as you can, without being ridiculous about it, making sure people see the contrast between what's going on in Berkeley right now with Antifa, and what's going on in Texas right now with grown adult human beings helping each other regardless of race, religion, uh, political affiliation, whatever. These are the Americans. These are what we should be. Make sure people see that because, you know, the media is going to try to bring race, bring religion, bring all kinds of things into Texas that don't belong there. Call them out. Make every effort to call them out. When you see one of those stories breaks and you have to be on social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or whatever else is out there, call them out every single time. Say, no, this is not what's happening. What's happening is people are helping each other regardless. And there is not the rampant racism that you're saying there is. That there are good people in this country and the good people are actually the overwhelming majority that the people that the media want to push are the fringe idiots every single time because that's what makes the news right now the good people are making the news in texas and let's keep it that way for a while let's break this this ignorance this idiocracy that's going on right now in places like charlotte and berkeley and wherever else they're going to happen Break them right down. Do me that favor this week. I'm going to cut it a little bit short because, quite honestly, I am, uh, I've am i got bigger and badder and crazier things to do. So what I want you to do is have a great week. Remember what I told you. Take a few seconds. Get a pad and a paper. Write yourself a plan down. You know, I did that. I think the first one I wrote was right before Y2K because I started thinking, what if something like that happened? I really didn't think Y2K would happen. 
And those of you who don't know what Y2K is, you're too young, look it up, Google it. You got a computer, you wouldn't be listening to this. But I, it got me thinking, what happens if the grid goes out? What happens if we have a disaster and all the electricity, all the power goes out? How will I heat the house? How will I feed my kids? How will I keep my wife warm? You know, outside of that. <laughs> But, you know, think about these things. Take a little bit of time. It, it requires you setting your gadgets down and forgetting about, uh, forgetting about social media and playing games and doing all the crap that distracts us all the time. Um, but, again, as we see, there's only so much government to go around. There's only so much FEMA. There's only, only so much Department of Homeland Security. There's only so much government resources you may or may not be one of the lucky ones to obtain any what are you going to do how are you going to survive how are you going to get through a couple of weeks and and, and what's going on in texas is just starting these people now have to rebuild the people on the coast a lot of them have to rebuild the people in houston they got to fight fight flood damage Cars destroyed, houses destroyed, the cleaning that comes with flood damage, every bit of that. That's what's got to happen now. And that, that's, a, that's a conversation for another day. So, keep yourself in the fight. Keep yourself happy this week. You know, and that, that's the best thing you can do to really destroy the left's ideology is be happy. Be happy with who you are, what you are, how you are, and don't let them get you down. I'm Alan Ray, the Hardcore Patriot. I am going to get out of here. God bless you. God bless the USA. We'll talk again soon. You can find Alan Ray on Twitter at 2 cynical 65 or at the Atomic Doghouse 1965.wordpress.com. Thank you for listening to the Hardcore Patriot.